Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video uh, and another, I guess, road trip adventure with the Chevrolet Bolt EV. I actually need to run down, uh, this is just Saturday, uh, I need to run down because I want to check out an EV that I want to test drive and maybe showcase on the channel or not maybe, but definitely want to showcase on the channel. Um, but the, the problem is uh, this is all the way down in San Luis Obispo. So it's about 300 and some odd miles down and 300 and some odd miles back. Basically, it's two thirds of my typical 500 mile trip down to Southern California. So the fact that I'm doing it all in one day is about 700 and something, maybe 750 miles. Uh, so it's going to be a pretty challenging uh, trip given, you know, I'm still on my original battery, 60 kilowatt hour, um, missing about five uh, kilowatt hours of usable capacity degradation after 150,000 miles. Um, and so, yeah, it's going to be a little bit challenging. Uh, because I want to try to get it all done in one day and then of course spend at least a decent amount of time uh, down there in San Luis Obispo uh, with the vehicle. So uh, yeah, we're going to head out. I'm already kind of late, had to do a bunch of chores before I could even head out. Uh, but to sort of compensate for that, I did violate the uh, the GM protocol a little bit and I, I charged up to full uh, how much it will help me, I don't know. Um, I have my first uh, stop planned out because it's another one of those Ultium chargers I want to check out. It's about 170 miles away, but given it's in the 30s right now, so a little bit freezing, some wet roads, who knows, it, it could still be challenging to, to make it even 170 miles at 70 to 75 mile an hour driving. So uh, either way, I'm burning daylight. Uh, I'm gonna head out as quickly as I can. made it to our first stop. Uh, I believe it's Newark is technically the city that we're in. It's actually uh, the same uh, city where uh, Lucid, I believe, has their headquarters, which is pretty cool. But uh, just over 170 miles into the trip, uh, I kind of wanted to see this uh, this uh, EV Go site. This is another one of the Ultium Ready sites, and I'm going to do a quick site review of it when I'm here. Uh, maybe dive into some particulars about the chargers, the interface, things like that that they're using. But uh, it also happens that we're in the same exact facility as an Electrify America a charging site, which I've never used before. So maybe that will be on my list uh, to check off as well. And then, um, and then I, you know, thing is, I actually drove by many, many chargers to get here. And even the ramp that I took to get off the uh, freeway, there was an Electrify America charger there as well, as I recall. So um, yeah, there's no, uh, no lack of chargers here. Um, but it also sort of, I want to emphasize something uh, because I feel like maybe I haven't emphasized it enough uh, because I know a lot of people are going to look at this seven, 750 mile uh, trip that I'm making in a day and they're going to look and say, oh, he was charging for 30 minutes a at a time and, you know, maybe three hours, three and a half hours. I don't know what it's going to end up being over the course of this trip. Uh, but what they're not going to focus on is the fact that this was the very first leg and it was almost two hours and 40 minutes, right? So uh, you're talking about a long time that you're on. I've been on the road already before my first stop for longer uh, than, you know, I'm going to probably spend charging for the entire trip. And that's something that I think a lot of people just try to ignore is it takes a long time to drive five, six, seven hundred miles. And so even if you're charging for two, two and a half, three hours over the course of that, you're really not um, spending as much time charging um, as it may appear. All right, well, I went ahead and plugged in uh, the, uh, the next stop into the map. There we go. Uh, and it's, it's 100 miles away, so we should be getting there about 1.30. Uh, but... Uh, at this point, we're over 60% battery, uh, which should be good enough to go the 100 miles. Um, 
you know, the, these are slightly slower speed freeways and the conditions seem to be okay. So I'm just going to look to close out this session at a 65%. Um, it looks like I'll have spent about 45 minutes charging during this session. It's been longer though because of the, the charger shut down, the long activation times and uh, not, not having a clean way to activate the uh, Delta charger. So all things considered, yeah, we're going to spend about um, a little over 50 minutes here, uh, which is longer than I intended. And of course, I had to drive out of my way to get here. So all of this is impacting the trip, but hopefully not too much. So uh, we're, we're really going to look to just start jamming at this point. So uh, yeah, let's get ready to uh, head out. Yeah, so I started at, at 9, got to 29, and then from 29 to 64. So technically two sessions, but... We're here in Soledad and uh, you know this is a stop that I've been meaning to, to make for a while but I haven't really been running uh, up and down uh, Highway 101 as much uh, because this is actually kind of, it's kind of funny because this is about the farthest that I could make it in my old Subaru WRX and that's on a good day uh, before I absolutely had to stop and refuel so um, I would make it either here or maybe Gonzalez and uh, you know I, I've stopped here before there's a Denny's over here there's a, there's a lot of places to eat uh, so you know it is a good place and then again there's also uh, another freeway or another uh, highway here that you join up with I think it's one yeah 146 uh, so I, I love these sort of intersections between highways because that's where a lot of people are going to be traveling through anyway. Uh, so I like the fact that uh, Electrify America placed a charger here. The, the only uh, problem is we pulled off the freeway at about 1.30 p.m. I didn't actually pull into this spot until 1.35 um, so it takes a really long time to get from the freeway here, even though you can literally see this site from the freeway. It's just because it's all circuitous and it's all stop and go and you're having to deal with parking lot traffic and all of that. Uh, so that's the one real big knock on this site, even though these are faster chargers and they're located just off of a freeway. I would really only use this as sort of a destination uh, fast charger. If you're hoping to, to get in and out and back on the road again uh, really quickly, this isn't a charger that I would recommend. You, li you literally lose five minutes um, just getting here. Um, but otherwise, you know, four chargers, all of them open. You know, I'm already up to like 45% battery. Uh, we're, it's a little over 100 miles to get into San Luis Obispo from here. Uh, you know, and I, I left late, so I know I'm running late, all of that. Um, but uh, I'm going to try to do a really quick site review if I can. It's a pretty busy um, shopping mart here. Uh, what is it? The, the, the Food Co. Um, it's a pretty, pretty uh, busy, it looks like here. So I'm just going to try to do a quick site review and then leave, uh, if I can, with at least, uh, say, probably 60, 65% uh, battery. Again, I got here with um, about 15%, a little bit more than that. Um, and uh, but it's going to be a faster freeway to San Luis Obispo from here and it looks like the winds are starting to kick up and they're headwinds so uh, at least when you're southbound so we'll see but anyway uh, yeah I'm just going to try I'm just trying to juggle everything that I have to do uh, before I have to leave in what looks like maybe only about 10 to 15 minutes so. all right well I'm making some final arrangements to to meet with the person um that I'm, I'm going down there to see at San Luis Obispo. So hopefully they can meet me at the EV go chargers, uh, um, you know, just to, just to make things convenient for both of us. Yeah. So yeah, we're, 
We're going to head over there and, and, and meet him. We're almost at 65% at this point anyway. It's diminishing returns, but it is 104 miles. Like I said, the wind is picking up everything else. But uh, the, the guessimeter, <laughs> the, the range estimator people are running, you know, rubbing off on me for the uh, Bolt EV tends to be a little bit on the conservative side anyway. Um, and uh, yeah, so I getting to the point of feeling pretty confident that I should be able to make it without an issue. Uh, but they're saying that if we leave now, we'll show up about, um, about four, which is when I told him I would meet him there. Um, and I don't want him to have to wait around, right? Just to slow downs or anything else. So he's doing me a favor. Anyway, l let's, uh, let's head down. So they didn't have my information. Okay. made a quick pit stop here I just didn't want to have to risk it the way uh, it looks like maybe 10 15 20 mile an hour crosswinds were kicking up I just didn't want to have to deal with that especially since you have to kind of go up a hill and crest over um, I kind of knew that you can get pretty gnarly crosswinds coming through this section it's not a super big deal if you have to stop for just an extra top up here or there uh, pro part of the problem though is the rest stops at Bradley are are closed right now and it's really frustrating because you look at the chargers and they're powered up you can't access them through you know the the rest stop uh exits and on on ramps and off ramps so uh basically you're, you're stuck having to come someplace like this which is electrify america and paso robles it's a great stop right in in the sense that um you know it's right in the middle of town uh problem is though it's a pain in the butt to get to from the freeway and so now I'm probably going to be about five minutes late uh, meeting up with the person that I'm meeting up with. Uh, but then again, I'm only, you know, going to be here for about five minutes. So really the time that I actually lost, because I, I said I'd show up around four, uh, the time that I lost is, is basically the time it took to get from the freeway to here. Like I said, I'm not super concerned. We probably could have made it, but... You know, I had five minutes, so I'll, you know, might as well, might as well use it and not run the risk of having to slow down or, you know, run out of juice, right? When it's not, you know, there's no need for that. So anyway, uh, yeah, just uh, going to get ready to close out the charge and get back on the road again. here to the uh, EVgo uh, charger in San Luis Obispo I had 15% battery when I plugged in uh, so I don't know if Paso Robles was absolutely necessary we probably would have got here with about 5% or maybe a little bit less than that uh, but luckily the winds kind of died down on the way over so um, I'm glad I made the stop just th there's no reason to risk it when you have that as an option when you can when you can just charge for five minutes like I said my my only frustration is it was so inconvenient to get to that charger and I kind of forgot uh, just how inconvenient it is um, which is unfortunate but it's better than no coverage at all uh, another fun little fact that uh, Vernon here this is actually uh, the same uh, charger that I used 
the, for the very first time on my very first trip uh, in the Chevrolet Bolt EV. I guess I'm feeling a little bit nostalgic. It's been almost five years. And, uh, anyway, yeah, all's well that ends well. I'm plugged in and charging. And uh, yeah, the reason I came down, um, you know, he's coming over right now uh, with his Ford Ranger Electric. So uh, stay tuned for that as well. That was pretty awesome. So uh, thank you again, George, uh, for letting me drive your Ford Ranger Electric, your functioning Ford Ranger Electric. So um, amazing. So happy to see a truck like that still on the road. Uh, like I said, um, I'm going to put a description uh, in, in the description for that video, uh, just a, a link to George's page. Reach out to him if it's something that you're interested in. He's really looking uh, to get it in the hands of someone who's really hoping to preserve, right, uh, that electric vehicle heritage, right? Um, anyway, we need to hit the road, though, because I have at least seven and a half to eight hours of driving uh, to get home again. I don't know if I'm going to try to take I-5 or if I'm going to uh, maybe go to straight up 101 again. Uh, I don't know which one is going to make the most sense, but I didn't actually have anything to eat yet either. I just grabbed something to drink, uh, used the bathroom, uh, but we're up over 80% charge. Uh, so I'm just going to plug in my home into the... Uh, into uh, Google Maps and see how it directs me to get home the fastest, but I don't expect to be home anytime uh, before, before midnight, maybe 1 a.m. All right, so actually here we are at 82%. It's still, um, it's still charging, but um, <laughs> 1,093 minutes, but yeah, let's just stop and get going. 82% should be enough to get me um, to wherever I feel like stopping for dinner and charging up. So, uh, and the memories, five years. Whew. We've been friends a long time, Vernon. You haven't let me down yet. Maybe that one time I saw you kissing that leaf. Okay, I decided to stop here in Soledad again really quick. Um, on the way north, I needed to uh, use the bathroom and I wanted to grab a cup of coffee uh, and also kind of decide on, on where I wanted to, to eat. Um, I don't know if I want to sit down in a restaurant and eat in the current state of affairs, right? So um, anyway, uh, I think I know where I'm going now. <laughs> uh, but also, I, I something else I forgot to mention. So in, in addition to this being easier to access northbound, which is nice to know, uh, certain charging stations you'll want to pay attention to this are either better for northbound or better for southbound. Some some are equally good, uh, but uh, most of the time you'll find that a charger is better for a particular direction that you're going. In this case, I think this is a lot better for northbound travelers. Um, but that being said, also I forgot that there's also there was construction in the parking lot, and I. I grabbed a quick video clip of it as I walked by and it looks like additional chargers. I don't know who would be putting them in here. Uh, it could be Rivian Adventure Network. It looks a little bit small to be a Tesla site, frankly. Um, but yeah, you see all the conduits. They, they dug it, dug them out and wh whoever's putting chargers there, they're going to be pretty uh, convenient if you're going to stop at like the Denny's or the Starbucks or whatever over there. So just nice to know more additional options. We already saw that EVgo uh, put chargers in the same parking lot as another Electrify America site as well. So who knows? Um, and EVgo did buy out Recargo, and maybe Recargo still had some potential agreements on on paper. So it could be EVgo, could be ChargePoint. I wouldn't be surprised, basically, at any network at this point, other than Electrify America, adding chargers here. But anyway, I know where we're going. It's only about 55 miles away. Uh, we're up to almost 50% uh, battery now, uh, down to only 45% or down to only charging at 45 kilowatts. So uh, let's end this session and hit the road.
I stopped here at Gilroy. Unfortunately, my uh, Android Auto died um, for whatever reason. I don't know if it's the cord went has gone bad uh, and there's no data connection. I know someone who won't be named spilled water on my USB ports and they've been kind of fidgety since then. So uh, all I know though is that Android Auto isn't displaying, uh, <laughs> which is why I missed this exit to get here to uh, the Gilroy outlets. And um, I mean, I should have known better um, and you know, it would have been easy to do, but um, anyway, yeah, I, I missed it. And so now, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm having to sort of navigate basically without Android Auto on display. Luckily, I kind of know the area, um, but, uh, you know, I finished uh, I finished a meal, um, I, I finished eating. We're up to like 67% now, so I'm pretty much ready to go. Uh, I, I won't have time to do a site review here for the uh, um, Electrify America at the Gilroy Outlets. Um, you know, it's a nice addition. Eight chargers, two of them 350 kilowatt, I think. The rest uh, 150 kilowatt ABB chargers. So maybe one of these days I'll be able to swing by and actually do a formal review. Uh, but in the meantime, yeah, like I said, I spent most of my time just eating, uh, grabbing food. So um, yeah, it's time to time to hit the road, um, and probably need to make at least one sort of longish uh, stop and one hopefully short stop. Um, on the trip back but yeah it's uh we still have i think uh, about 200 miles to to get back um, so yeah we have uh, <laughs> we have our work cut out for us and it's it's already nine o'clock so uh just between the delays like i said losing navigation that sort of thing um and then of course stopping for a meal uh, this isn't meant to be some like speed run anyway so uh yeah i'm just gonna close out the session and we can head out In uh, Vacaville at the uh, premium outlets, I just figured I'd stop at the Electrify America chargers because, well, we got here at four percent battery. So, um, yeah, this this will be actually a, a quicker stop. Uh, I don't really have anything to do here other than fuel. I think uh, the bathrooms here are locked at this point, so I'm not really going to be able to use the bathroom here either. Uh, but you know, I don't have to go urgently, but yeah, these, these are the stops where if I had the opportunity to just drive, um, for three hours to four hours straight and maybe make a, a five minute bathroom break, I would. Um, and that's, but this is again, towards the end of the trip where I've already been on the road for eight, nine, you know, hours. So, um, anyway, yeah. Let's uh, see if we can get Android Auto fixed. Probably can't. And uh, yeah, we'll be out of here in probably yeah, 20 minutes, maybe. Well, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> Android Auto still isn't working. So I'm just going to have to, I think, wait until I can see if I have another, another data cable. Anyway, um, yeah, we've been here for 26 minutes. Uh, we're at 43%, 44%. Um, I think we can just go. Um, we were joined by another Bolt EV, uh, so that makes three of us charging. But yeah, there's there's no real reason for me to... I mean, we're going to be jamming it up the freeway. Uh, but yeah, there's no real reason for me to, to try to charge that much more. So um, yeah, and we're already tapering down again because the battery is warm. So we're already at 48 kilowatts. So might as well go up to done again. At least there I can walk over and use the bathroom. And uh, yeah, let's hit the road. <laughs>
All right, well, we made it here to Dunnigan. Uh, according to the uh, I th the charger, I think we had 23% uh, battery uh, when we got here. So um, one thing that I didn't mention, uh, what I've been kind of trying to track is originally when the battery was fresh uh, and uh, when, uh, you know, no real degradation in my Bolt EV's battery and I was running the stock Michelin tires, uh, I had a rule of thumb where I could see about 50 miles of, you know, average freeway range or about 70 mile an hour range, uh, 50 miles per one of those 25% segments, essentially at 200 miles at freeway range. Um, and I noticed that it's since the degradation that started changing and then adding the Continental tires onto it changed it even more. Um, and it's hard because when GM refreshed uh, the programming after the initial battery recall, um, they made it more conservative, which didn't give me the same numbers on the display that I was used to seeing. So it kept making it more and more, um, conservative. Uh, so I, I never really had a chance to kind of measure out and see, well, how is my rule of thumb standing up, right? How, how, how many miles can I actually expect, uh, out of a 25% segment of battery? Now, Again, this is this is now winter. Temperatures in the 40s. There's wind, but all of these factors start piling up. And from Vacaville to here, it looks like it used the full 25% battery, and that was only to go 37 miles. So that's much, much less than what I would be used to. Now, again, with the new battery uh, replacement that's pending, or when it whenever it comes then I'll probably be back to that same original 50 miles or so uh, per 25% uh, uh, segment, um, even with these Continental tires. But still, right now, it's made it very, very difficult. And then, of course, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of how conservative the uh, range estimator is on this because it really does... Um, it really does make you concerned about whether you can make a trip, uh, you know, whether you can complete a leg of your trip. Uh, I mean, even I basically, rather than risk it, stopped at Paso Robles for five minutes. Um, I normally wouldn't do that if I had a better gauge of where the battery was. So some of it is my being out of practice and some of it is just all of these different adjustments and factors are making it much more difficult to... Um, really predict your range at any given time, even when you're seeing your, your current consumption and current conditions. So anyway, um, I'm only going to charge up to 50% here. I decided not to walk over to the convenience store. It's like half a block away. Uh, like I said, it's 40 degrees. I don't really have to use the bathroom that much. And I figure I'm just going to stop at the Maxwell rest stop. Um, on the way up and I'll just use the bathroom and opportunity charge uh, just make sure that that charger there is in good working order and if it is well then great I'll put it in plug share and if it's not you're on Santa's naughty list but uh, but yeah so we're we're almost ready to go so uh, let, let's get ready to head out Here at the Maxwell rest stop, that was a nice, uh, convenient bathroom break, and I've, I've basically I added about five percent battery. I haven't shut it off yet. Other non-networked, I have to have that toggled on um, my uh, plug share map um, so that it shows up. And then, of course, here we are. And actually, it shows it in use. So, uh, just gonna check in really quick I try to check in when I can uh, just to you know make sure that everybody knows it's working and hey it was working great we didn't even really need this much range right we we can just uh we we can just go for now yeah let's just close out this session and head out six minutes Mm -hmm. and the rest
Все. Well, we made it home. That was quite an adventure. 17-hour um, day almost, uh, but got to drive a Ford Ranger Electric, got to sort of adventure all up and down <laughs> uh, California along the 101 corridor, review a, different, a few different sites. Um, so yeah, it was all told. Pretty, pretty much what I expected. Um, Again, sort of the efficiency isn't great, and the the charging uh, stops weren't spaced out well for like an ideal trip, right? I could have done just 750 miles straight up in probably five hours less than this, about four four and a half hours less than this. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was just just a trip. So, um, I I hope this was helpful. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. I hope. Uh, it inspires you to take your own trips in the EV. Um, I think we all learned something. <laughs> We're all richer for the experience. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go grab some Zs. Uh, if you enjoyed this uh, video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And thank you for watching. <laughs>